Rapid urbanization and environmental change are key planetary issues for this era. Additionally, human activities at different scales and levels, such as mobility across space and time, influences how individuals perceive their environments in daily life, ultimately affecting health outcomes. My passion lies in leveraging remote sensing and geospatial technologies to quantify various forms of built and natural environments and monitor their changes over time. My primary motivation is to use data and modeling to characterize the spatial-temporal interactions between humans and the environment. The Future Urbanity and the Sustainable Environmental Lab, or FUSE Lab, which I currently lead, has rapidly evolved into a vibrant research hub for urban environmental studies. We provide data-driven insights and evidence-based solutions that inform policy making, enhance urban planning, and improve public health responses to environmental change. Proactively embracing interdisciplinary collaboration is very essential. Engaging and working closely with experts from different specializations fundamentally supports our aim of addressing those complex systematic issues. Our research connects environmental change, human activities, and health outcomes, and significantly contributes to my vision of fostering green, healthy, and sustainable cities worldwide. My research is dedicated to the development of a novel heterogeneous catalyst based on crystalline framework materials and metal nanoclusters for organic synthesis. In addition to offering superior reactivity, selectivity, and stability compared to their homogeneous counterparts, this newly developed heterogeneous catalyst can be readily separated and recycled from reaction mixtures, leading to cost savings, risk reduction, and enhanced product quality in large-scale chemical manufacturing. Achieving excellence in the field requires not only enjoying a pound my prior research experience in organic chemistry, but also establishing a solid foundation in inorganic chemistry and the material science. Most scientists in the field are trained in inorganic chemistry or material science rather than organic chemistry. But by harnessing our collective expertise, my team and I have the potential to greatly prepare advances in the field through the realization of impactful catalytic organic transformations. I hope that our fundamental research in catalysis will lead to cost reductions and the reduced chemical waste during the synthesis of drugs and functional materials, ultimately benefiting human beings in their daily lives. Simply put, Organic synthesis is about turning one compound into another, as in the Chinese idiom, to turn stones into gold with a touch. Catalysis is like the touch. With catalysis, you can turn widely available and inexpensive chemical feedstocks into something invaluable, like medicines that save lives. Often, our research directly impacts the pharmaceutical industry Many domestic and international pharmaceutical companies have told us that they feel the reactions or catalysts we've developed are promising for addressing their difficulties in discovering and manufacturing drugs. And that's exactly what we are working hard for, to help make drugs more accessible at a lower cost through innovative catalysis and synthesis. We also believe the chemical insights we discovered are equally greatly valuable in their own right. We hope these can also inspire our peers to tackle difficult challenges in their own fields. My team and I now plan to build on our achievements in asymmetric catalysis and start addressing important challenges in other fields, particularly pressing ones that will contribute to building a sustainable future for human society. I've always been interested in medical methods and social systems. My eureka moment occurred while I was pursuing uh, my PhD degree at the University of Chicago during a long economic seminar titled Human Decisions and Machine Predictions. 
That's when I realized artificial intelligence could potentially completely change the legal industry. Over the years, with the emergence of big data and AI, the receptivity among legal scholars to both quantitative research has gradually increased. One of my primary objectives is to persuade lawmakers and legal practitioners through high-quality research that the process of lawmaking and judicial operation should fundamentally be based on meticulous data analysis and research. My research also examines the interaction between humans and AI in high-stake decision-making scenarios, such as judicial decision-making. It's improbable that AI will entirely replace humans. So it is crucial to understand how legal practitioners and AI can work together and the risks that the integration of AI may pose to high-stake legal decisions. I hope to use my research to introduce AI in law to legal professionals. We should neither turn a blind eye to the exciting advancements in this field, nor be overly optimistic and blindly believe in its future. Every strand of DNA carries stories with the potential to change lives. Using computer algorithms, accurately identifying a genetic mutation can save a life, while misinterpreting a mutation signal as mere noise can lead to immense suffering, not just for one patient, but potentially for an entire family. Bioinformatics serves as the bridge between biology and computing, empowering us to process vast amount of biological data with precision and efficiency. As a bioinformatics researcher, my work focuses on developing advanced algorithms and practical solutions to predict disease outcomes, personalize treatments, and identify new therapeutic targets. A question I constantly ask myself is, how will other researchers and medical professionals use my work? This guiding principle shapes my research, ensuring it is not only innovative, but also impactful. Bioinformaticians don't just decode genetic sequences. We transform them into actionable insights and tools that can improve healthcare outcomes, advance medical research, and ultimately benefit society as a whole. Today, bioinformatics has become an indispensable part of healthcare. The phrase, your life in your hands, captures one of the ultimate goals of this field and it has become my lifelong mission as well. My curiosity about the world began at a young age and I've never stopped being fascinated by relationships between countries. I spent several years in China during my undergraduate and postgraduate studies. Eventually, I pursued a career in researching international relations, Chinese foreign policy, and China-U.S. relations. My first major research agenda has focused on documenting and understanding uh, the nature and the consequences and impacts of Chinese government-financed development projects throughout the global south. This has been a major international collaboration, and now at HKU, it also involves dozens of my graduate and undergraduate students. Research is always more difficult and more time-consuming than we ever anticipate. What types of data and measurements are best suited for answering a given research question? And what is one supposed to do when those data and measures are not available? These are major and common challenges for international relations scholars, as well as for those studying Chinese domestic and foreign policies. As a researcher, I strive to maximize my research quality and the impact of my research by pursuing projects that are rigorous and difficult, but are also public facing and are focused on important and oftentimes misunderstood topics in international relations. My future work aims to use evidence from both historical and contemporary China, as well as other cases around the world, to add to a growing research agenda on understanding how states and other international actors make policies and investments 
on globally connected physical and digital infrastructure projects that shape economic and non-economic relations between countries. Our aging population requires advanced engineering designs that enable healthcare with lower cost and greater precision. My team and I work on biomaterials and biomedical devices. Our research is inspired by the complexity of nature and the simplicity of its fundamental principles. We impart biomimetic concepts for the engineering of soft materials and devices. Take this material, it's called hydrogel. It's mostly made of water. At the same time, it has structures and properties very similar to the natural low-bearing soft tissues, such as cartilage, ligaments, and tendons. This is very difficult to achieve with traditional engineering materials. There are lots of important applications. Repairing tissue injuries, creating implantable electronics for healthcare and human-machine interaction, engineering a hybrid living tissue in a lab, for the design of precision medicine, and much more. We have an interdisciplinary team, including students, postdocs, and collaborators. With our diverse expertise and collaborative efforts, we can address some critical challenges and hopefully bring new ideas for the promotion of human health and better quality of life. Achieving global sustainability across environmental conservation, social inclusion, and economic development is crucial to achieving a harmony in the human nature system and improving the human well-being worldwide in the Anthropocene era. My research takes a holistic approach, integrating natural and social sciences, policy and technology to understand and promote the global environmental sustainability. I have significantly contributed to the quantification of sustainability by establishing an integrated indicator framework and developed systematic methods to quantify the progress towards sustainable development at both national and subnational levels simultaneously. My research has also contributed to unveiling the complexity of the human nature interactions across multiple distant coupled systems. While many existing studies focus on understanding human nature interactions within the specific systems. My research helps to distangle the complexity of globalization and environmental changes in a couple of different places simultaneously. Looking forward, in the upcoming decade, I aim to further build on my research on global sustainable development and will include areas such as the precise quantification of its progress, the characteristics of the complex relational dynamics within the systems, and a comprehensive exploration of its policies and management strategies. As an undergraduate student, I took a veterinary medicine course to study genetic diseases, the most frequent causes of pandemic outbreaks. I was then trained as a biologist, working closely with clinician scientists, which shifted my way of thinking from bedside to bench and back. My team and I leverage system-based approaches and state-of-the-art technologies to examine the virus host interface, identify targets for antiviral intervention with a focus on only viruses that pose a pandemic threat. Our findings are harnessed to develop new antiviral drugs as well as immunization with live attenuated and synthetic vaccines against the viral diseases. By focusing on small molecular drugs that can be delivered orally and are cheaper and easier for patients to access, we aim to help ensure the world is prepared to quickly develop and equitably deploy effective antiviral treatments when a pandemic threat emerges. My translational innovations, I believe, will continue to benefit both academic research and the pharmaceutical industry, leading to new generations of antiviral countermeasures, better understanding of virus pathogenesis and disease mechanisms, as well as novel targets for viral disease therapy.